All right, it's Monday morning. We're on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange with Jim Cramer. The big story, GE CEO Jeff Immelt stepping down. Jim, what was your reaction? Well, look, I think that there was a lot of pressure uh, on the board that it was time. Uh, I know that GE is saying, listen, for 2013, they'd always prepared a secession, but the underperformance, and, and the last straw really was that last meeting where he just said, listen, the $2 number, uh, that's the high end. And, and there was a belief, uh, let's say among Tryon, Tryon had a big position, that uh, this wasn't going to happen, that the big cuts were going to occur, and that the $2 number was, was going to be out there. But the two things that I think doomed Jeff uh, the first one was the negative cash flow in the first quarter, which was just kind of out of the blue. And the second one was there was great conviviality with Tryon. Now, Tryon's not big enough to be able to move the needle for GE, but there was great conviviality in a meeting that I went to with uh, Nelson Peltz and Jeff Immel, and I've been, on, I've been with them together. And there was a kind of a big letdown that, um, that it looked like the numbers were coming through, and, and then the numbers slipped everywhere. Uh, but you have to ask yourself, would Jeff have left before the consummation uh, and then the, uh, let's say, next year or two with Baker Hughes? Uh, because that combination is so, so important. So I'd say there was a lot of pressure, and, and the board felt like it had to act because the stock has been the worst performer in the Dow uh, during the period that Jeff's been in there, and that does matter. And I know the company is very adamant uh, that the dividend is safe. Uh, I think there, there are people like the Deutsche Bank analysts who are saying that is not the case. Uh, I'm looking for upgrades. I'm looking for people to cut numbers, perhaps to a buck, you know, you know maybe well short of two bucks, but say that, that Flannery is not going to uh, let you down here. My friends who know Flannery are adamant that he's a Jack guy. He's a Jack Welch guy. And that means firing people. That means taking costs out. That means uh, reshuffling the portfolio. It does not mean breaking the company up. And GE is an actual Earth Plus name. It's an actual Earth Plus name, and we talked last week about how we wanted to sell it, but we feared that there would be a move within the next few weeks uh, to change the CEO. Um, we were prescient. I've done a lot of work behind the scenes, and I know that there were people who were uh, really saying it, it, Jeff stayed too long, 16 years. It, I think from the press conference, it did seem like Jeff felt that it was time to move on. But uh, I look for uh, the, the Baker Hughes deal. I, I, they did not cut and run when oil went down. I think that's important. I, I think the Baker Hughes deal that they're doing consummates at the end of the month. You're going to see some acquisitions done by that. Uh, remember, rig count is going up. Uh, GE has both offshore and onshore. Onshore is very good right now. Uh, we own Schlumberger for Action Alerts, and they're more offshore, and they have not done as well uh, as Baker Hughes. Remember, Baker Hughes was going to merge with Halbert, and that fell apart, so Baker Hughes merging with GE. It will be very interesting to see what Bornstein, who's uh, vice chairman now, did not get the top job. I know Tryon really liked him. When I speak with Tryon, Tryon would not talk today, but when I've spoken to Tryon, if you remember, we had Ed Garden last week at our corporate governance. Ed, Ed Garden is key man in Tryon with Nelson Peltz. I know that when I asked him about GE, it was like, whoa, you know, uh, kind of not happy. So that's a lot of my insight comes from the fact that we did have Ed at the corporate governance conference, which was really a fabulous conference. And I know that you, you, you cringed when, I, people cringed when I mentioned uh, Imhel at the uh, conference because Ed was just total no comment. A a and then, you know, obviously uh, no comment meaning real unhappy. All right, Jim, let's move on to tech stocks. What do you make of the sell-off we're seeing? Okay, now I, I have a piece of real money about the game plans. Um, you want to key on Amazon. Uh, I think Amazon, I'm not going to say whether Amazon's going to hold or not. I don't want to do that. I'm going to say if you see it hold. This is very different. One of the things I've learned in sell-offs is that you have to let the buyers and sellers tell you what to do. If Amazon holds and Autodesk holds, those were two that had great quarters. I know people don't normally focus on Autodesk, A-D-S-K, that had a fantastic quarter. If they hold, then you're going to see buyers come in. Lamb Research had a great quarter. If that holds, you're going to see buyers come in. So you want to key on those. You don't want to key on Facebook or Apple. Apple had that key downgrade last night. You don't want to key on Netflix because that stock has run a great deal. You don't want to key on, on Alphabet, Google, because there's no new news. But you do want to key on Amazon because that has been, that was up you know, north of 1,000, it's come down very hard. 
uh, to below 9,500, you know, to below 950, and that is the one where there's it's a very big decline, and there's been no negatives associated with it. So that is your key. Autodesk second, Lam Research third. You mentioned Apple. What did you make of the downgrade by Mizuho? You know, I think it was what I call a statement downgrade. It put uh, Mizuho on uh, on the map. Now, uh, that analyst, I'll be interviewing that analyst on Scott Wapner's halftime report. Um, the thing that was most damaging, that I was most concerned about, was something that I am not getting um, when I do my work, which is that there is uh, problems with the service revenue. Now, the service revenue has been very key for me. Uh, the analyst is thinking that the numbers are too high for service revenue. The analyst doesn't deny that the uh, Apple iPhone 8 is a big cycle. This is a multiple compression story. They're basically saying you're not, people are not going to continue to pay up for the earnings that you're getting there. I think that's an interesting call because, remember, if it's a consumer product story the way I think, um, then I think you're going to see the stock go higher because um, Procter & Gale, let's take Procter. Procter trades uh, about 18, 19 times earnings. By the way, here's a heads up. I think Tryon's going to go very aggressively after Procter & Gamble. Hmm. I think they're happy enough with GE. Procter & Gamble's the next, uh, you should buy Procter, okay? I'm just giving you a heads up. Um, that Procter & Gamble, you should watch that versus Apple. You should watch Clorox versus Apple. You should watch Colgate versus Apple. You should watch Newell, Rub Newell Brands, which we own for Action Alerts, versus Apple, because this is a this is a consumer product story. Now, I've been saying that for two years. It was great that I, you know Warren Buffett adopted. Now, obviously, he didn't watch me. This, he was only watched me once when I interviewed John Stumpf, and he didn't like it. That's the former CEO of Wells. But if it's a consumer product story, it should trade higher. The multiple's too low, and that. That's what I'm going to discuss when I discuss with the analysts on Scott Wapner's halftime show. How about the way you view the stock? If you view it as a consumer product story, you don't sell it, you well, buy it. People should look up your interview with Tim Cook because you talk a lot about that as well. Yeah, and Tim, you, look, um, I play with an open hand. I, I, I come in with a two-pronged story, consumer product and, uh, and service revenue. Uh, the consumer product story is not accentuated nearly enough in the Mizuho piece, as far as I'm concerned. And I mean, just as important, I, I, the revenue numbers from, coming from service are basically saying, be careful, There's, they're not gonna be there. That's what I'm watching. I need to see, I wanna drill down on that. All right, we look forward to your appearance on with Scott Wapner today, Thank but you, you were also on on Friday talking about NVIDIA with Andrew Left. Yeah, now, it, you know, Andrew, I had some back and forth with him about uh, some things he said about CNBC, I feel better about it, because. I think some of that might have been out of context, but you know, you take things personally in this business. You, you play hard, and he's been also. Uh, we've had a lot written about him in Real Money. Um, I didn't disagree with him. The notion was in, that he's liked Nvidia very much, and said over and over again that people should own Nvidia. That Nvidia was too cheap versus a lot of the stocks that people were buying. And then NVIDIA goes from 100 to 150 very fast. And what he's really basically, basically doing is giving NVIDIA stock a speed, speeding ticket. Mm -hmm. He's saying, listen, this is not what it should be, and that you've got the wrong kind of owners, which is what the casino mentioned. I, I can't disagree with that as much as I like NVIDIA. Uh, a lot of people, I have an Action Alerts Wednesday call, mm. and a lot of people said, you know, Jim, you like NVIDIA so much, why aren't you in NVIDIA? And I always come back and say, wait a second, we're in Adobe, we're in Facebook, mm. we're in Western Digital, we're in Alphabet, we're in Apple. You can't own them all or you would have been slaughtered Friday. And that's what we've been trying to avoid. Adobe, by the way, down very big on a downgrade that's yeah. totally based on valuation. I don't like historic valuation calls. Why? Because a lot of these companies' businesses have accelerated. Mm -hmm. If you go back to my interview with Anil Bushri, who is the CEO of Workday, he is telling you that cloud adoption has gotten far faster, uh, faster. There had been a big cloud adoption in finance, and obviously in tech. He's saying now healthcare and retail, which are very big sectors, are moving aggressively on the cloud. So what that tells me is be careful downgrading Adobe if the story is morphing into a more longer term view, because they are how you do a commercial cloud uh, marketing, and I like them. By the way, I think that Salesforce has come down enough. And I would initiate a position in Salesforce. Now, when I say that on Twitter, people say, that people come in and say, I bought all of the Salesforce at this level, and now you crush me. So I say, if you do that, you might as well be shorting Salesforce. I am not talking about you. I'm saying if you wanted to buy 200 shares of Salesforce, you buy 50 here. 
Okay, there are also reports that Western Digital may be making a better offer for Toshiba's well, flash business. Western Digital's down. Now, why would it be down? Two reasons. One is that if they get it, people feel that they have to do an equity offering. The articles kind of indicate that they can do a debt deal and maybe have some other buyers with them. They do have a Japanese buyer with them. I've been waiting for Western Digital to actually make a real offer. This is, a lot of people are saying, well, they haven't made an offer yet. Uh, this is a real offer. Uh, Western Digital has basically said they can hold up anything. I don't know if that's true, but Toshiba desperately needs the money. Uh, if you go over, there's a David Faber and I were talking about Broadcom last week. Now, Broadcom on its conference call, Hawk 10, twice said, listen, I won't do anything unless it's got connectivity involved with it. You could stretch the definition of Toshiba's flash to say that he meant connectivity. I've had trouble with that. I'm not sure about a rival bid. What I do know is that the Western Digital bid will be well received by everybody and that you could buy Western Digital here, which we again own for Action Alerts. We did sell some at 91, and I think that you might have to have a second bite at the Apple if they do an equity offering to help finance it. They need to because they spent so much money on SanDisk, but I like Western Digital here on a possible Toshiba flash buyout. All right, also Morgan Stanley analysts are raising their bear case on Tesla. Yeah, I mean, that, that is a, if, if you're a bear, and uh, Brian shows he has a terrific little piece about Tesla and how you, know, you got to be careful. You know, you always have to be careful of Tesla if you think it's a car company. You don't have to be careful of Tesla if you think it's a technology company, because technology companies obviously can, uh, you can put a different multiple on a technology company and you can say that the technology is really good. What was frightening for any bear in that Morgan Stanley piece was that they're talking about the possibility of profitability for Tesla. Now, no bear would ever think that there could be anything but phony profitability. Here you're talking about positive cash flow. If there is positive cash flow, and again, I am not saying it is, but if the Morgan Stanley bull case about positive uh, cash flow comes true, then the Morgan Stanley price target north of 500, I believe, can come true. Now that, that now that will be interpreted as saying Jim Cramer thinks it can go to 500. I want to be very careful. I'm saying Morgan Stanley thinks that if the cash flow is positive. Okay. Uh, also, you talked about stop trading FedEx. Yeah, I, I've been doing a lot of work on FedEx. They report June 20, and I think that FedEx is a company that uh, is very close to President Trump. I don't know if anyone even remembers last week because it was so comey. We were all comatose by the end of the week. But if you looked at what the FedEx uh, has to offer in terms of privatization of the um, air traffic control system and the privatization of airports, I don't think there's anyone who's better. You got a June 20th earnings report. I think it's going to be good. Um, but I think that you're going to see uh, the uh, FedEx, uh, both the CEO and uh, Fred Smith, a very, hard, very big Trump supporter, in to see the president. I know that p people are kind of just saying whatever the president's thinking right now is irrelevant. But remember, uh, privatization of the, uh, of the airport, he's always been very strong that the airports are no good in this country. Privatization of uh, uh, anything involving the airports has to be public-private. And FedEx would be a winner. Maybe they talk about it on the June 20th call. All right, and then one more name we're watching. It's not a public company, but Uber. There's yeah, reports I mean, that- Yeah, I okay, you know, try, I, people should read uh, Adam Lashinsky's excellent book that came out a couple weeks ago about Travis. And remember, his, mom, you know, his parents were in a very bad car accident. And, uh, Eric Holder came in, he's a serious guy. He was the head of the Justice Department. He did a lot of examination. Obviously, the company uh, has been run in a way that I think most of us would be embarrassed by, uh, except when it comes to the bottom line. No one is saying the bottom line is bad. So I would say that, um, yes, if it were public, you'd short it, but then you'd have to cover it. Okay, Jim, what are you expecting from the Federal Reserve meeting on Wednesday? Okay, on the Federal Reserve meeting, I have been saying that they're going to raise rates. Uh, I don't know what they're going to do in terms of commentary, other than I think they'll be saying, look, uh, we do believe that if the economy stays we, if employment stays strong, and I don't think they're going to say employment's weak, even though the last number was not that good, then, we'll, then we will certainly take into account the idea and raise it again, raise rates again. The banks have had three days of run. I don't trust them. Uh, we, have, we own Key. We own Wells Fargo. We trimmed City a little. We bought a little Wells last week. We're, trade, we're reshuffling because City has been the best performer. Wells has been the worst performer. So we thought we should do that for the Chapel Trap for Action Alerts. I'll talk about the rotation on Wednesday. I think we'll have further information about the rotation as we get closer and closer to the Fed meeting.
Yes, that actual alerts plus call is on Wednesday at noon. At 12, exactly right. All right. We're looking forward to that. Thank you. Jim Kramer, thank you so much as always. And for more information on the stocks Jim mentioned, please head back to thestreet.com.